<clears throat> okay, this is uh, just a little update on the cistern. Uh, what you're looking at here is rain gutters. Uh, one at the top, and the pointer's not showing. Hmm. Up here. This goes around one side of the house. This comes from the other side of the house. They join up and go down. Right now, there's a temporary uh, uh, wall in here. And this will get a spout that goes around to those uh, <clears throat> half a dozen entry holes into the cistern. But because we haven't painted the cistern yet, um, that's just left alone. I'm just putting these pictures on the front of the actual video because uh, my wife erases the pictures every day. Uh, that's just digging the hole for the fish or for the shrimp tank. Another look at the uh, hole. I guess that dirt on the end is is what they've loosened up up here, but haven't shoveled out of the hole. Th these are daily updates that they send us because we're not in the Philippines. Um, those are pipe spacers, uh, usually used as the space forms apart. I don't know what they're laying there. Um, they're showing that they brought the mixer down there into the gutter. I guess they're going to pour some concrete and that's where they parked it. Amazing, it, it will work off level like that. Uh, all the dirt's out of the hole at this point. Okay, here we go. Um... Pretend that's water and you got a swimming pool. <clears throat> the blue stuff is uh, uh, that uh, tarpaulin fabric that they use for signage around the Philippines. They'll they'll run it through a machine and uh, uh, print on it. You, the name of your business and you know uh, pictures and all kinds of stuff. Um, we use it uh, in place of polyethylene uh, sheeting underneath the concrete. If you pour uh, uh, concrete uh, on loose dirt or even compacted dirt when that water runs out of the bottom into the dirt uh, it carries a lot of the cement powder with it the Portland cement so your concrete is not as good also it, it uh, changes the uh, water content bottom to top and you get a lot of cracks in the cement that you would not normally have even if you didn't water it and it wasn't windy and it wasn't uh, 105 degrees over here so if you put a piece of plastic down, you just uh, keep what, what you mixed as what you mixed. Uh, it's cheap insurance. Uh, and also that not having the rough bottom is, is less uh, stress points it can, it can run a crack from. Uh, you'll notice that the grid is fairly neat. The parts laying out on the, on the uh, tarpaulin fabric. There's four pieces of it going left to right. But what we're going to look at here is the... Uh, uh, form bars. Okay. Um, you can see that the grids, in, in this case, they're the same uh, eight and three quarter inches. Uh, well, you can't see that they're eight and three quarters, but they're the same uh, up and down and left and right. Both X and Y directions are, are the same. <clears throat> um, on the right over here, you can't quite make out those notches, and I'm afraid to try to zoom this thing, but there's actually notches in that board that is sitting down over these rebars to space it. Uh, there's the notch bar uh, on the left over here, and you see they have the uh, the bent up ends in the notches, and that's spaced them that way. They'll have another one on the right side. Okay? So... That, in other words, you have one, one going one direction and one going the other way. But there's, even if you have unequal notches, if you're using uh, the rectangles rather than squares, it's a real quick way to locate the bars without having to hold them. Now, this is uh, not done yet. There's a little gray thing here, and there's one up there. Uh, there will be about 100 of those on, on this uh, this tank. What that does is this spaces up the rebars, the lower rebar, which is the ones going lengthwise on this case. Use your highest loaded rebars to go on the bottom 
because they're closer to the surface and they have a better leverage there. Anyway, uh, these, what we call them biscuits, uh, they're actually concrete trees. We make them out of a, a mold that's for uh, selling uh, strawberries and stuff in the supermarket. Just, just bought a case of them, you know, and we've used them four or five times. You get one of those, uh, or you get a, a sack of those cheap plastic bags that they put stuff in at the, at the vegetable market. And plus you probably have 50 of them uh, in, at, at the house from, from things you bought in the past. But we just put the, the little green uh, styrofoam thing in that, pour the concrete in it. And that way it doesn't stick and you use them over and over and over again. And we've been using them for five years there's a few of them. Here's another one over here. But they'll eventually, uh, I told them to throw them out there just to keep the the, uh, the plastic in place, you know. And also, these things need to be raised up to tie them. It's a whole lot easier to tie them when, they, when they've got a space on them to get the wire under. But you see, they've they've tied every joint here. There's tie wire in every joint. So they've, they've managed to do it with it uh, flat. Maybe they'd like to be able to walk on it. I don't know. Uh, they, these holes are kind of small to, to put your foot down through to get it flat on the ground. So maybe it's easier for them just to, to force that tie under there and pull it up and wrap it. Uh, looks to me like there's about an inch and a quarter rise here. And a little low spot there. And I guess they're going to be that way. But instead of pouring this floor six inches... Uh, I told them uh, a couple weeks ago we were going to pour it eight. And uh, six would be plenty. Five would be enough. Because the, uh, there's a footer, uh, you know, goes around and, uh, you know, this, just, it's just a little overkill. There's plenty of bars in it. Um, even if it has an inch, inch or inch and a quarter thin spot here, it would be six and a quarter thick maybe. Oh, well, another thing we're going to look at here is these uh, these bars come over, and then they bend up the wall. That ties the uh, walls to the floor. Now, sometimes you take, uh, we call them dog bones. It's a, uh, a rubber bar that's got a uh, thin in the middle, and the edges are wider. And a cross-sectional area is about like a dog bone. And you would pour your wet cement and uh, do your first screed or your first float, and then you put this rubber down in there, and that encapsulates the bottom into the floor, and when you pour your wall, it it's, uh, gets it on the top. So it uh, makes a reasonably watertight seal. Um, I haven't bothered to look for that in the Philippines. It just seems like something that you wouldn't be able to find here. Looked like it'd be a, a waste of tricycle time chasing it down. So we, we just decided we're going to start doing this. Because we do a lot of slip forms. And that's what we're going to do on this. So these, these will be right down the center of the wall. You know, all even. And uh, the wall will be very well anchored <laughs> to the floor. Uh, and that's another reason why the, th the thickness of this floor doesn't make much difference. I am kind of surprised that there's a that that rises in there. I don't think it's an optical illusion. I think it actually is in there. Could be, it could be that a lot of times you have um, uh, cell phone camera pictures that uh, that make concrete beams look curved and stuff. It may be uh, uh, something to do with the uh, the photograph. See, I don't know, see if it. Yeah, it's flat on, on the on the side of her that wasn't before. I guess it's a camera apparition of the camera. Um, they've got uh, one bar uh, over here running down the side. That's just to keep those things upright. This one on the end, it has a. Uh, uh, two and a half or three foot overlap down here. <clears throat> in other words, it's, it's the exact same part as th these ones in the floor. Uh, there'll just be uh, space, like you've seen in all the other videos where we're doing slip forms. It's too close to the, together to bottom, then they're uh, about nine inches apart, and then too close together at the uh, up at the four foot depth of the uh, of the form. And then they, the next time that your slip form goes up, the the continuation of this bar, you'd have two bars, uh, like an inch and a half above the uh, the starting surface, and then three inches, and then you they go back to the nine or so, and that goes up right till you get to the uh, seven and a half foot height, and then 
only every other one of these bars goes up. Because the, 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 the vertical bars will be cut at, uh, if it was 20 feet, they'd be 9 and 11. But the, the bars are uh, uh, 19 foot 6. So you can figure from there. But you want you want to have a piece sticking up that you can bend over and put into the floor or the ceiling or whatever. Uh, just like a bent end on a bar. It doesn't look near as uh, hilly on that view. I don't know if he's he stepped. Yeah, he's probably stepped a little sideways. So we only see the left side. And that would be Benji. Tell from the hat. Uh, uh, maybe Miguel. And I'm not sure who the third one is. Um, there's two groups of three brothers. And uh, when this was taken, one of them was down sick. You know, I think these these bars that uh, uh, are actually curved to the left that they the, the notched board that they had on it was probably pushed over. Because I can't imagine it that, uh, that our foreman boy would have left to rise inch and a half. He checks this thing with that with a stick with his uh, plastic tubing on it. And he's real meticulous. And on everything he does, he's meticulous. I'll look at tomorrow's uh, dailies and see what we got. Anyway, they'll, once they pour this, then they'll put all the uh, the, the, the U-shaped things around the end and the uh, bar down the middle that joins it all together. But this is a uh, shrimp tank. Uh, over behind these... Uh, hmm... Looks like birds of paradise and bananas. Like this is a banana over here. And those are all bananas. I'm not sure what, I think that's birds of paradise too. I know they're planted around the foundation, so I got a head start on that. Uh, they, oh, the dirty kitchen is showing up behind this uh, uh, tree here. And one of the other pictures, the uh, uh, septic tank is, is right behind the guy with the camera. It's uh, about 15 feet from the end of this uh, pond. Um, I don't think there's much else to see here. So we got three guys there. We got one here. And he's putting a uh, extension cord here down for something. I don't know what he's working on. I don't know that they'd be using power tools here. Um we got a guy that's going by and um, like uh, this uh, this slab on the uh, right that you can't see because of the cursors. Maybe you can see it when it moves. Uh, on the right over here is the slab of the house. The walls are sitting on the slab. So the slab is actually uh, just like a footer. It's uh, uh, about seven inches thick, and uh, and that way the weight of the wall has to push the entire floor into the ground. That's some kind of a solar panel, I guess. There, um, but anyway, this gutter, and it, you can see the shape here that where the gutters all come together. Uh, when that dries, it leaves about a quarter inch gap here between those two slabs. So he uh, scraped all the uh, dirt and sand and garbage out of there, right down the whole uh, eight inches of thickness, and then forced uh, mortar in it. And uh, he put the bonding, a concrete bonding agent on the top. And, uh, you know, then just to stick this down so it wouldn't flake off. But he's gone around the whole house and done that. Probably don't have any more pictures of it. Oh, this spot here was where the, there was a uh, banana tree growing here, and uh, so it, it uh, when we when we dug the shoots up, they put this piece of concrete. They dug some more shoots up, and they got that section there, and it was a it was a big hole in the middle with a banana still growing. 
So they finally harvested bananas off that and dug it up. So he's showing us that he's got, got the uh, two gutters connected. The reason the water is in this is because the uh, the place where it's supposed to get out has got a wall built across it. Um, and that was partly a, a, a plan. Because if, uh, if we start having uh, ant infiltrations, we can throw a few uh, shovelfuls of dirt there and get the garden hose out, put three inches of water in this trough. And uh, we'll trap the ones that are inside and we'll stop the other ones from coming in. Uh, but it, it is, it, we call it the moat. If there's water in it, it's the moat. But there's no uh, fish or anything in this to kill the mosquitoes. So uh, you really don't want to have water uh, standing in the Philippines. Mosquitoes and termites are just everywhere. Um, this is uh, the last divider wall between section three and section four of the septic tank. And it as you they see this about uh an inch and a half short of the uh uh top. That's because this is an overflow from part three to part floor. All the other ones, there's a transfer pipes, there's like three transfer pipes at the four foot height level. And that's how it maintains the water all at the same level. But when when the water level gets up uh to this point, you don't want to have it above the uh, inlet pipe because then it could, it could restrict the flow, slow it down, and, and uh, you know drop out solid somewhere up in the pipe when you slow the water up. So we, you want to maintain your water uh, just below the uh, the bottom of the pipe. And uh, so they'll put a, a little bit of a rounded finish on this. We have a 25% airspace in the septic tank. Uh, which is code. You can see that the, over here, the top edge of the tank. Well, you could if my pointer showed up. What if I can make a black pointer? I don't know. Uh, and these rebars here, uh, uh, they'll just get trimmed off. They'll, they'll trim them about a half an inch up or maybe an inch. So this rounded cap that's going to go on there. Uh, and the idea of that is we only have to have a manhole in the second digester. Uh, that's on, that's uh, four feet by 12 or so across the end of the tank. And uh, that's after all the, 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 the scum on the top and the sludge on the bottom in the, in the first digester. Second one's uh, um, baker's yeast for the uh medium first one is a, is an enzyme made for septic tanks that eats the sludge off the bottom um and anyway if if you put your manhole in the second digester uh it stinks but uh you know but it's still it's pretty clean water uh you still got to take a bath after you get in it but you could get in there or you could pump that out uh near dry and get in there and then use a little ladder, and you can look over these walls to see what's happening over there on the right over here on the uh, on the first digester, which is to the right of this this section, or into this uh, uh, parts uh, three or part four. I I wouldn't think anybody would ever want to climb over that. It's only fourteen inches high and four feet wide, so I don't think anybody's ever going to thirty two inches wide. I don't think anybody want to get over there to do any work down in there, but at least you can look over the wall from a relatively clean place, see what's going on. Uh, and all except for the first digester, the rest of them really just look like water. There might be some brownish color to it, but uh, I don't know why they. Um, I guess somebody took a picture before anybody could find a trowel. I don't know why it looks so awful rough. Uh, okay, you can see here we had a pretty big separation on this uh, concrete. That's probably uh, three quarters of an inch. And he's he's working his way around filling it up. Uh, and that's how much they're digging out uh, uh, one end to get it level. What they did was they, they leveled it off 
And then the two septic tank lines run through this area. So they, they uh, fished around and found those. They know where they come out. You, you're, they're they're out, sticking out of the ground over there. So uh, they could find that, but they, ha they had to find them in the tank. And what we did is we come down, uh, decided we could go down to two inches uh, off the top of the, that septic tank line. Or they could dig down around it and let the concrete fill up around it. Told them to do it either way they want. But the, the deal was we wanted to put this thing in the ground uh, to, uh, on, the, on the higher side because the septic lines run downhill a quarter inch to the foot. So on the high, uh, the high end side, we wanted uh, two inches of dirt cover on the septic tank. That just see you can see all that bottom is flat, you know. I don't know why it was looking so 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 uh, crooked before. Lost my pointer. Ah, there he is. And you can tell where they're digging. It's it's flat as they dig. Dirty kitchen in the background. These pictures will be gone when my wife wakes up. Uh, that's another. There's ten of these sides. It's a ten sided house. Uh, we put the gutter down there because the, the roof is round and it's be really hard to make one of them nice stainless gutters around a round roof. It'd have to be a weldment and the pieces wouldn't be rectangular. They'd have uh, curves like a banana when you cut them out. I can make patterns for the pieces, but that's an awful lot of TIG welding, you know, days. Uh, and any water that lands on the side of the house or ground on that area covered by this, uh, the width of this gutter, that just would be lost. And if we're going to try to keep uh, uh, 160,000 gallons of water in these tanks, eh, we need to collect all we can. In the time that they have been, well, we stopped for a couple, three or four days, but they've been working on this about a week. That grew <laughs> in that week. <laughs> it's... <laughs> While they're, while they're digging up this, this foot of dirt down here on the other end, that grew behind them. We can't grow peppers or tomatoes or anything you can eat other than uh, okra, cassava root, bananas. You can grow bananas. We were growing pineapples, so they set fire to our place and burn them. We were growing mahogany trees, so they set fire to our place and burn them. We were growing coconuts, so they set fire to our place and burn them. <laughs> five fires, five different crops. So I thought I'd put something in a tank. That's looking sideways at a, at a gutter. That's another one that he's got done. Um, there's some kind of a concrete stri It's the cistern. See the holes along the top right there? So that's the water cistern. Uh, yeah, any of those things, there's, there's pictures of them, videos. Okay, but all we really wanted to do was uh, uh, look at the uh, the ends. Oh, these these are thrown over on their side because they're going to uh, back the concrete mixer down in here to the other end so they can fill, you know, make uh, a couple, three mixes and dump them all to the right, make another three mixes and dump them off to the left. You know, the mixer will dump either side. And then they'll they'll pull it ahead a little bit. And uh, right now, they've got uh, 500 bags of sand and, and gravel, two and three, you know, two rows and three rows, running down this tank. And they'll be using them as they, as they come. But the idea is uh, um, they want them handy to the mixer. And there's uh, three barrels of water filled up and staged on, uh, in there on the rebar right now. They think they can pour that floor eight inches thick in a day. I'm having them make a, a notch board to head it off so they can not have to pour it all in one day. I think it's uh, abusive on the people as hot as it is. And it's right out in the sun. And we're working a, a short crew this uh, this couple weeks. Uh, we had a, uh, two of them uh, were standing around with no mask on and the Baron guy police came in there and said, hey, how come you haven't got a mask on? And they sent him home. So I don't know if they're going to be 20 days in their house or what. There's three people with um, COVID over there in, the, in that the community across the street. Oh, well, there's three people that are waiting to bury. I don't know uh, how many. Anyway, anybody that's uh, a friend or a neighbor, they're all on uh, 
self quarantine in their houses for, I think it's 20 days. It's sort of a punishment thing. It would have been 14 days if they was wearing their mask, but because they weren't wearing their mask, they run it to 20. And uh, they'll either starve to death in 20 days or they'll learn their lesson, maybe. And I noticed that I didn't see masks on these guys in the pictures. So I imagine uh, Aurora's going to be talking to them tomorrow. Okay, uh, oh, I uh, stuck a video up if uh, anybody might have seen it. It's about uh, solar electric, how to mount the panels. Uh, we had some special concerns on ours because of uh, typhoons blow through here. I know they call a lot of these uh, tropical storms typhoons. It's because people get their information from Facebook rather than the uh, Philippine weather stations. Because it has to be 75 miles an hour in the U.S. and the same equ equivalent in meters per second in the Philippines, same number. And there's three uh, three stages, but a stage one hurricane, uh, or stage, be, we, it would be signal three here, would be a stage one hurricane in the States. And they go to stage five in the States, and they go to from three, two, or one here. Volcanoes have the, have a similar rating. But this property is... Uh, uh, an island out in the middle of the Pacific, Luzon. And uh, tropical storms are bad enough, but uh, typhoons do blow through the Philippines. Real serious typhoons. So that if if that could get hold of your panels, you just scatter them through the hillside. And also, the, they keep setting our place on fire. And uh, wants to uh, make smoke to, to steal honey from the bees and a couple kids smoking cigarettes, collecting spiders to fight. Uh, just one thing after another. It just never seems to end. But we've had uh, five major fires just turn the place black. So right now I'm covering big chunks of it with concrete. You know, being a crazy foreigner, I guess. Man, there's some, there's some nice black dirt down here on this end. I could garden with that. That's some really nice looking dirt. I'm going to have to excavate some, some hillside here and get to that. Okay. Anyway, uh, this is the thing about the uh, progress on uh, the number one shrimp tank. The other one is dug already and flattened. All it needs is the uh, rebar and pour some concrete. All it needs. Yes. Okay. So uh, y'all have a nice day. Say a little prayer for us. Uh, you can click like if you want to, but we're not a monetized channel and they, we don't make it onto recommended, uh, video lists because we're such a pathetic little unwatched channel. <laughs> if the longest time, uh, our, our high on subscribers was 11, but, uh, the last few weeks has gone up. I don't know how, or how or why we don't do use any of those, um, fake programs that, uh, put down some kind of little four or five letters and, and, a, and a channel name. The, the, people sell lists of those to, to boost your subscriber base and your views. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you, you've got to be half crazy to, to get into this stuff that enough that you would pay somebody for a fake list of names. You know, I guess it's something like when they, they have dead people vote in the U S elections. You can buy a list. Anyway, this was rebar, uh, and and I thought it was a real good uh, sh show and notch bo boards in use. I don't know if oh these notch boards, uh, there'll be a, a set of notches on at least two faces. And you can't put it on all four faces because some of them are going to line up and it ends up with something an inch thick in the middle and it just break in two. But. Uh, you, you the the boards have been around since uh, we started construction. We used them on the original floor, uh, and that's why we have multiple configurations. Also, use these to make beams. Uh, they're laid across some saw horses with all the stirrups, uh, you know, in between, and then you just drop a stirrup in each notch, and um, you, you sh bring a rebar in, and lay it in the bottom, and gravity makes it straight up and down, pretty much. And after you get one bar on, you just shove all of them in from the end and uh, tie them up. But we tied uh, all the beams in the house. And that's why you see like like 
over here you see uh, f uh, several uh, notches close together because that would have been the end of a beam. Uh, I don't know, maybe this right here would be the, it's, it's two separate notch boards maybe right here, come apart right. Well, you can't see it because it's not in the camera. Uh, it looks like there's two different sizes of shapes of wood right there, so that's probably the end and this was probably the uh, the extra stirrups uh, for the end of the beam. But it's a real easy, fast way to do it. Uh, Aurora tied all the uh, wall rebar for the entire first floor in uh, two days. And that was cutting it to, uh, to length, uh, having it square, she painted a, a recta white rectangle on the floor. And she had a pattern for the uh, shape of the round windows because you had to cut all the bars out for the window shape. And then they, they, they roll a bar to go around the window about an inch and a half into the concrete. But she did the uh, the last one we were going to pour first, throw it on the floor, and stacked all of them in reverse order. Smart girl, you know. <laughs> but uh, in two days, we, ha we had two things accomplished. The rebars were ready to put up. We didn't have to do it when we were setting walls. So that way we could do two 24-foot uh, sections a week. If we didn't do other things and, and stop them all the time. But if we were just intent on pouring walls and building the house. We'd done two a week. We did several times, you know. It was 36 pours. So, uh, uh, anyway, notch boards is, is highly recommended. And it's cocoa lumber. And we store them in the dry, so that's the same ones we've always had. Okay, this video has uh, uh, gone longer than whatever. I think, uh, I think that's the reason why the channel's so unpopular. Uh, eight minute videos uh, are really popular. If you're trying to grow a channel, keep your videos at uh, below nine minutes. Uh, a lot of ours go over 30, and uh, you don't want to do that if you're actually trying to monetize or get to where you can have ads. If you wanted ads and things, you have to have a uh, thousand subscribers and 4,000 view views uh, a month or something like that. I'm not sure what it is, but. I'm not, I'm 80 years old. I don't need any of that. They wouldn't give me a check while I'm still breathing. Okay, we're going to, going to end this. Uh, say a little prayer for us. And if you want, look, we'll have another video someday.